The Fed is about to yank the rug on markets, economist and so begins the rug yank phase of Fed policy authored by Minnesota Gordon via economicprism.com. The political differences of today's leading two parties are not over ultimate questions of principles. Rather, they re over opposing answers to the question of how a goal can be achieved with the least sacrifice. For lawmakers, the goal is to promise the populace something for nothing while pretending to make good on it. Take the latest tax bill, for instance. The GOP wants to tax less and spend more. The Democrat Party wants to tax more and spend even more. We don't recall seeing any proposals to tax less, spend less, and shrink the size of the state. And why would we? Today a central planners and social engineers are enlightened and progressive. They know much more about anything and everything than the rest of us. In particular, they share a general sense that they know how to spend your money better than you. At best, the central planners call your money to Washington so they can then distribute it back to your friends and neighbors. In reality, the lawmakers call your money to Washington where they distribute it to their friends and neighbors not yours. This is not a matter of opinion. It is a matter of fact. Is it a coincidence that the top three wealthiest counties in the country are in the shadow of the capital, in the D.C. suburbs? What it is exactly that the residents of these counties do that as of tangible value is unclear. However, what is clear is that bogus government jobs in Loudoun County and Fairfax County, Virginia, pay big bucks. But that is not all garbage in garbage out further. Up the eastern seaboard, Wall Street has a good thing going too. The big bankers and brokers make big bucks extracting capital from Main Street America. That s a fair characterization, right? Perhaps the big bankers and brokers really are efficiently allocating capital to its highest and best use. Who knows? But as far as we can tell, they re-gambling with other people less money and collecting fees regardless of how their coin tosses fall. It as always, heads I win, tails you lose. Not a bad Fugazi gig, if you can get it. Of course, the cornerstone of it all is the Federal Reserve. Through what they call open market operations, the Fed rigs the game in Washington S and Wall Street S favor. Indeed, the process is really quite elegant. Under the smokescreen cover of garbage in economic data, the FedS economists produce garbage out bar charts and line graphs. These, in short, are fabricated depictions of the economy's growth, consumer, and producer prices, personal consumption expenditures, unemployment rate, and whatever other aggregate metrics are deemed to be of vital importance. What has more, these fabricated depictions serve as the basis for the Fed's monetary policy decisions. Do the graphs show price inflation heating up or cooling down? What about GDP or the unemployment rate? Is one going up while the other is going down? Is one going down while the other is going up? The Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, deliberates over these questions about every six weeks. Then the Fed goes to work inflating the nation as money supply, with the occasional rug yank, for the stated purpose, of getting the charts and graphs to illustrate the garbage data to their liking. What to make of it? The rug yank phase of Fed policy from the outside, the Fed's economists, and planners appear to be esteemed professionals making decisions with the intent of providing for the greater good of the country. They even attend economic conferences and forums where they present their latest research findings on abstract topics like liquidity traps. Some of their studies even include footnotes, as if the professional economists are building upon a concrete knowledge base of human intellect. Yet beneath this cover of bogus science, the real sausage is made. 
capital is borrowed into existence, where it is directed to Washington and Wall Street. There, having first dibs on this phony money, Washington and Wall Street get to spend it, as if it has real value. However, the real value does not coming from the Fed's phony money. In fact, as this new phony money appears on the scene, it extracts incremental wealth from the workers and producers across the country that, through their time, talent, and labor, created the wealth to begin with. At the moment, we're in the rug yank phase of the Fed's monetary policy. This is where they reel back credit ever so slightly after letting it run wild over the last decade. This tightening of credit markets has the effect of pulling the rug out from under financial markets and the economy. Monetary policy, without question, is not an exact science. It has rudimentary guesswork that is based on committee interpretations of bogus data. This week, the FOMC raised the federal funds rate by 0.25 percent to between 1.25 and 1.5 percent. This marks the third increase this year and the fifth increase this cycle. Incidentally, Janet Yellen also delivered her last press conference as chair of the Federal Reserve, though she will likely still chair the FOMC meeting scheduled for late January. Then J. Count Dracula Power will take over the helm of the nation as central bank. The broad expectation is for Powell to continue the rate increase playbook that Yellen has laid out, which includes three-quarter percent hikes in 2018. We wish Powell the best in his endeavors. But we suspect he will unwittingly pull the rug out from under financial markets and the economy before he completes his first year. After that, the fun really begins. Read more by Soren K. Group. Inflation in the U.S. economy, its three victims investors must know list of inflation indicators flashing red gets bigger going forward. It's very important to keep track of inflation in the U.S. economy very closely. If you look at the inflation indicators in the U.S. economy, we see a lot of them are flashing red and suggesting prices in the U.S. economy could be soaring going forward. And sadly, the list continues to get bigger. Be very careful. Consider the producer price index, PPI. At its core, it shows how the prices look at the production level think businesses and manufacturers. In November, the PPI increased by 0.4% from the previous month. In the first 11 months of 2017, Prices increased by 2.6%. Source, Producer Price Index News Release Summary, Bureau of Labor Statistics, December 12, 2017. How significant is this? Well, last time the PPI rose by over 2.6% in the first 11 months of the year. It was back in 2011. Why does the producer price matter? Let us get this straight, businesses pass the cost increases to customers. So if there they are seeing their prices increasing, don't be shocked to see it show up in the consumer prices. If you want to know about other inflation indicators, I wrote about few not too long ago. Read here for more. Three victims of inflation investors must know if prices are about to jump in the U.S. economy. There are three victims investors need to know. As inflation soars, consumption tumbles. Each dollar buys less than before. Keep in mind that consumption makes up roughly 70% of the U.S. gross domestic product. Also, as prices soar and incomes don't rise. We get all sorts of different problems at hand. Economic growth could be on the line. Inflation is essentially a tax on corporate earnings. When prices are rising, companies end up taking a hit on their profit margins. 
There is a limit to the costs they can pass on to customers. If the customers can't pay, they end up absorbing costs. Will they hire a similar number of employees if their profits tumble? Will their stock price remain the same or collapse? Inflation is bonds' biggest enemy. If bond prices tumble and yields increase, this could create trouble across the bonds market. Remember that the U.S. bonds market has amassed to 39.0 trillion dollar, and that as not all bond yields soaring would mean businesses and consumers borrowing costs surging. Dear reader, as it stands, the Federal Reserve is on track to raise rates, and there is a lot of confidence among investors that inflation won't get out of hand. However, don't ignore the money that has been printed over the years. We have seen immense monetary inflation. It could really start to show up in prices sooner than later, and we could really be looking at inflation running at five percent. In the next few years. The Fed is about to yank the rug on markets, economist and so begins the rug yank phase of Fed policy authored by Minnesota Gordon via economicprism.com. The political differences of today's leading two parties are not over ultimate questions of principles. Rather, they re over opposing answers to the question of how a goal can be achieved with the least sacrifice. For lawmakers, the goal is to promise the populace something for nothing while not a bad Fugazi gig if you can get it. Of course, the cornerstone of it all is the Federal Reserve. Through what they call open market operations, the Fed rigs the game in Washington s and Wall Street s favor. Indeed, the process is really quite elegant. Under the smokescreen cover of garbage in economic data, the FedS economists produce garbage out bar charts and line graphs. These, in short, are fabricated depictions of the economy's growth, consumer and producer prices, personal consumption expenditures, unemployment rate, and whatever other agri pretending to make good on it. Take the latest tax bill, for instance. The GOP wants to tax less and spend more. The Democrat Party wants to tax more and spend even more. We don't recall seeing any proposals to tax less, spend less, and shrink the size of the state. And why would we? Today, as central planners and social engineers are enlightened and progressive, they know much more about anything and everything than the rest of us. In particular, they share a general sense that they know how to spend your money better than you. At best, the central planners call your money to Washington so they can then distribute it back to your friends and neighbors. In reality, the lawmakers call your money to Washington where they distribute it to their friends and neighbors, not yours. This is not a matter of opinion; it is a matter of fact. Is it a coincidence that the top three wealthiest counties in the country are in the shadow of the capital, in the D.C. suburbs? What it is exactly that the residents of these counties do that is of tangible value is unclear. However, what is clear is that bogus government jobs in Loudoun County and Fairfax County, Virginia, pay big bucks. But that is not all garbage in, garbage out. Further. Up the eastern seaboard, Wall Street has a good thing going too. The big bankers and brokers make big bucks extracting capital from Main Street America. That's a fair characterization, right? 
Perhaps the big bankers and brokers really are efficiently allocating capital to its highest and best use. Who knows? But as far as we can tell, they re gambling with other people less money and collecting fees regardless of how their coin tosses fall. It's always heads I win, tails you lose.